all right so good morning everyone so good uh, good day to each and every one of you who's watching this video right now so for today we will be continuing our discussion about anemia so last time we did a brief introduction about anemia already we did talk about um absolute anemia relative anemia and we did talk about and classify anemia based on based on its um based on um, inadequacy in hematopoiesis or inadequacy in production or impairment or inefficiency in the or ineffective ineffective or inefficient production or hematopoiesis so for this morning we will continue on with the different types or uh, different kinds of anemia so for this morning we will be talking about um iron deficiency anemia, we will be talking about anemia due to chronic disease, we'll be talking about hemosiderosis, hemochromatosis, and also megaloblastic anemia. So let's get started. So first one is impaired or defective production of anemia. So when we say impaired or defective production of anemia, we're not talking about the number of RBCs being produced, but the quality of the um, RBCs that are being produced. So the first one, okay, the first one is iron deficiency anemia. So iron deficiency anemia is actually the most common cause of anemia. So there can be a lot, there can be a lot of um, etiology onto why iron deficiency anemia is happening. First and foremost is inadequate intake of, of iron. So inadequate intake of iron. So you all know that around one to two milligrams per one to two milligrams per day of iron is being excreted out of the body. So what, and if you're gonna think about that, that's very small amount naman din, di ba? But when we say inadequate intake, meaning to say, yung, nila, yung nawawala sa katawan mo is greater than your intake. Okay? So eventually, that would cause um, deficiency in the iron reserves, in the iron that is in your body. So, Secondly, increased need. So, there is um, an increased need of iron when you are, of course, growing and developing. So, that can also pose threat of iron deficiency anemia if the need for iron is not compensated. So, the need, um, the need for iron is increases, but the intake or the reserve of iron is already been depleted and not replenished. Sec third, okay, third is impaired absorption. Impaired absorption, heal ma malabsorption due to celiac disease, persistent production of hepcidine, and decreased stomach acidity or presence of antacids. So let me um, elaborate impaired absorption first. So you all know that the main source of iron um, in our body are, of course, the reserves, okay, the... Fe the 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 ferritin that is stored in your bones and in your liver but aside from that um the one to two milligrams per the one to two milligrams of iron is actually being replenished because of your diet so if you have impaired absorption due to malabsorption due to celiac disease then iron absorption will be impaired aside from that is persistent production of hepcidine sir what is hepcidine all about ba Please take it. Take down note that hepcidine is actually a hepcidine is actually a hormone that it, that that decreases the absorption of iron in your um in your gut. So do remember, okay? Do remember na kapag madaming hepcidine, bina block niya yung absorption ng iron. So therefore, no iron will be absorbed will be absorbed from your diet. Okay? Sir, what about decreased stomach acidity? And I will be um, correlating it to antacids already. Decreased stomach acidity, okay? Decreased stomach acidity. So, so meaning to say, nagiging alkaline, okay? Nagiging, um, nagiging alkaline na yung, yung, yung stomach. And for iron to be absorbed, okay? I want you to remember this. For iron to be absorbed, okay? For iron to be absorbed, it needs to have an acidic environment, okay? It needs to have an acidic environment. So, 
the the reason why um impaired yung iron iron absorption during um um decreased stomach acidity it's because it decreases the conversion of your dietary ferric iron to its absorbable ferrous iron so kapag hindi acidic yung stomach yung ferric iron mo naging ferric iron lang and that is not the one being absorbed by your body the one absorbed by your body is your ferrous iron so for it to be converted to ferrous iron it first need to um it it actually being aided by the acidity dun sa stomach mo okay so my purpose talaga kung bakit din acidic yung stomach natin and that is to convert the ferric iron into ferrous iron, ferrous iron which is absorbable inside your body. And meaning to say, kapag may antacids, ano bang job ng antacid? Antacid is to what? Um, antacid is a medication for um, hyperacidity. Okay? Hyperacidity. At kapag nasobrahan ka naman ng antacid, okay, magiging alkaline din yung um, pH ng iyong stomach. So, therefore, babalik ulit ako doon, your ferric iron will not be converted to ferrous, ergo, will not be absorbed by your body. Okay? Next is your chronic blood loss. So, chronic blood loss, chronic hemorrhage or hemolysis can also cause um, iron deficiency anemia. Okay? It can also cause chronic, um, it can also cause iron deficiency anemia. So, it can either be through repeated blood donations, ayan, chronic hemorrhage, or even hemolysis na on, um, small amount lang but over time accumulated, it will actually be, um, it will actually cause um, increased um, heme iron loss in your body. So na, it's very important for you to remember that, especially if the chronic hemorrhage is in the gastrointestinal tract because of ulcers, can also have you the um, some tumors and ulcerative colitis and even hemorrhoids and gastritis so all those things can actually cause um, chronic hemorrhage or hemolysis and as you can see sinabi ko nga dito chronic blood loss so chronic when i say chronic it's actually for a longer period of time this is not an acute blood loss na short time or all of a sudden you lose this blood no so in chronic blood loss over time na uubos or nawawala yung iyong dugo okay so um iron deficiency anemia is actually prevalent okay it's prevalent among infants and children again going back to the reason because um they need more iron when they need more iron um when they are growing secondly pregnant women of course pregnant women Dalawa na kasi yung, yung sinusupplyan niya ng iron. One for the baby and also for the mother's need. Excessive menstrual flow. That's why it's very um, it's very much common to um, women. Okay? It's very much common to women dahil sa kanilang menstrual flow. Elderly and poor, pay, poor diet. So elderly it has something to do with their absorption already. Okay, so yung absorption ng, ng katawan nila. At the same time, elderly that doesn't consume um, enough um, iron in their diet. Malabsorption syndromes. So malabsorption syndromes is also one. Um, next is chronic blood loss. It can either be through gastrointestinal bleeding or hookworm infection. So what hookworm infections that may be, it's your um, Necator americanus. Okay, your negator americano. So hookworm infection can actually cause um, uh, iron deficiency anemia due to chronic blood loss. And also, um, men can also have um, iron deficiency anemia and postmenopausal women are also prevalent to iron deficiency anemia. So in short, no one is actually safe. Okay, so let's just have a quick review of iron metabolism first. So what is the regulatory hormone for iron metabolism? The answer here is your hepcidine, okay? The answer here is your hepcidine, okay? Site of maximum absorption of your iron is in your gastrointestinal tract. It's your duodenum and your jejunum, okay? Duodenum and your jejunum. What about how many milligrams of iron is being absorbed by the body? 
So I hope you all know this. It is 1 to 2 milligrams of iron per day, okay? And also, that is the very same amount of iron excreted by the body. So absorbed and excreted is the same 1 to 2 milligrams of iron. So major transport protein of iron in the plasma. So what is the major iron um, pro transport protein for iron in the plasma? We call it transferrin, okay? Napakadaling tandaan, it transfer. What does it transfer? Your ferrin, your iron, okay? Transferrin. So inside our body, there are two storage forms of iron. That is your ferritin and your hemosiderin, okay? Ferritin and your hemosiderin. That's two. Ferritin and your hemosiderin. And what is the excretion for average daily loss? So I guess alam nyo na to, sinabi natin kanina, 1 to 2 milligrams of iron through your sweat, through your urine, or either through your feces. So all of those are due, uh, all of them accumulated is 1 to 2 milligrams per deciliter. Okay? So why do we talk, uh, why are we talking about this? Okay, why are we talking about um, all these things? Because we're gonna talk about how can we diagnose iron deficiency anemia okay so but before i uh before i continue it's very important for us to remember why is it that transferrin levels are increased in your um in iron deficiency anemia so transferrin to be exact okay transferrin is actually your um carrier protein for iron why is it that um why is it that transferrin is increased during iron deficiency anemia Sabihin na natin na um, sabihin na natin na yung transferin mo para yang jeep. Okay? Para yang jeep na matagal uh, para yang jeep na na nangangailangan pumarada, nangangailangan um, bumiyahe, rather nangangailangan bumiyahe para makuha niya yung boundary niya, yung kota niya. And take for example, there are only a few um, there are only a few passengers and we will um, compare the passengers into your iron, okay? To your iron. So, madaming sasakyan, madaming jeep na kailangan pumasada para um, maka ma reach nila yung boundary nila, ma reach nila yung quota nila. But there are only few uh, there are only few iron. And that is also the same thing when it comes to um, iron deficiency anemia, okay? Yung katawan mo, okay? You, there is a need for more iron, okay? Parang kailangan nila ng boundary. Kaya madaming lalabas na jeep, madaming lalabas na transferrin. At dahil madaming lalabas na transferrin, your transferrin now will be increased in your body. So parang sa daan, dadami yung jeep na nasa daan. So that, in a sense, okay, transferrin levels, okay, balik na ako kay transferrin, transferrin levels tend to increase be, during iron deficiency anemia because this is your body's attempt, okay? This is your body's attempt to gather more iron, okay? To gather more iron. And the body is now trying to capture as much iron as possible to compensate the need of your body. So, nakukuha tayo doon. That is the reason why uh, um, transferrin is increased during iron deficiency anemia. nag increase sila, pinaproduce sila ng katawan mo para mas madaming magkolekta ng iron. Ang hindi alam, okay, ang hindi... Ang hindi na realize is that um, it is actually because there is already depleted iron inside our body. Okay? So, talking more about iron metabolism. Okay? Let's talk about iron metabolism. So, uh, regarding the transportation of your iron, plasma transferrin, okay, transferrin, the carrier protein for your iron, um, the level is usually expressed as iron binding capacity. So, meaning to say, we don't measure transferrin directly, okay? We don't measure transferrin directly. Instead, we are measuring the total iron binding capacity, okay? Total iron binding capacity. So, it is an indirect measure of your transferrin, okay? So, sir, bakit po ganon, okay? Bakit po um, TIBC or total iron binding capacity yung measure natin? Parang ganito yan. Okay? 
what we count is not the number of cars but the number of seats available. Nakukuha na can you get that analogy? Kunwari, may isang jeep. Hindi natin binibilang kung ilang jeep yung nakalabas. Ang binibilang natin ay kung ilang upuan or il- ilang upuan yung available sa isang jeep. Kunwari, shaman yan. Shaman by by one side to other side. So, 18 all in all. Okay? 18 all in all. So, that is how we actually measure the transferring level. So, those seats na sinasabi natin, those binding sites are actually the binding site for your iron. So meaning to say, yun yung capacity nung, tra- nung transferrin to absorb the iron. Okay? So that is very important for you guys to remember ha, that uh, when it comes to transferrin, what we measure is actually your total iron binding capacity. Okay? Total iron binding capacity. So it's very important for us to remember that. Okay? So by the way, before uh, before I before I move forward, okay? Ferritin on the other hand makikisulat po ako, okay? Mamaya kasi pag-uusapan natin yung ferritin and hemosiderin again are the storage form of your but storage form of your iron. So, that is for the transportation. Let's go now to the utilization, okay? Saan siya ginagamit? So, the mitochondrial iron is incorporated into your protoporphyrin to form your heme. Sounds familiar? Why mitochondrial? So, your iron, first and foremost, bakit nga ba kasi importante ang iron sa katawan ng tao? And again, I will, go, na, dito na again papasok yung sinasabi ko, how important it is for us to master the pathway that we did discuss before. So, what about, um, what about the utilization of iron? The utilization of iron, please do remember everyone, that your iron is a very important component for him production. Heme production is very important, on the other hand, in the production of your hemoglobin. And hemoglobin is a very important component in the transport of oxygen and other gases inside your body. So, going back now to utilization of iron. Your mitochondrial iron is being incorporated to your protoporphyrin 9 through the help of your ferrochelatase or your heme synthase. Remember? Heme synthase. So this particular enzyme um, incorporates your iron to your protoporphyrin 9 ring for it to produce your heme. Okay? So, bakit mitochondria? Remember, sa mitochondria nangyayari um, yung last stage ng, ng hemoglobin production. Okay? So, that is where your iron is being utilized. Okay? Let's go now. Um, we did discuss about the transportation of iron the utilization of iron. Now, let's talk about the storage of iron. So again, sabi ko nga kanina, there are two forms of iron storage inside your body. The first one is ferritin, which is the soluble form, and the hemosiderin, which is the insoluble form. Later on, we will be talking about hemosiderin in hereditary hemosiderosis and hemochromatosis. And I, I think you've heard that already in your histopathology, the hemochromatosis. So in iron um, iron storage, we have two, okay? The ferritin, okay? One, the ferritin. And the other one is your hemosiderin, okay? Those are the two forms, both the insoluble and the soluble form of iron storage inside our body. So moving forward, let's talk about now the iron metabolism with regards to its excretion. So the average uh, um, the average daily loss of iron in the urine, in the feces, and sweat collectively, and even um, through cell desquamation is actually 1 to 2 milligrams per deciliter. Okay? 1 to 2 milligrams per deciliter. Although normal dietary diet contains about 15 milligrams of iron, okay? Yung normal diet natin contains 15 milligrams of iron, only 1 to 2 milligrams of iron are actually absorbed by the body. And this is actually being um, being closely monitored by your hepcidin. So again, kapag 1 to 2 milligrams of iron na yung at yung, yung na-produce, hepcidin will be produced, therefore um, stopping the absorption of your iron. Guys, I want you to remember hepcidin. Okay? Hepcidin um, is a hormone that blocks the absorption of your iron. Okay, so that is for your um, that is for um, iron metabolism. So a while back I, we were talking about um, measures on how 
on how we can diagnose anemia. And one that we talk about is through um, the increased transferrin, the increased level of TIBC, okay, increased amount of TIBC. There's also another thing that we can, um, that I want you guys to remember, which is your free erythrocyte protoporphyrin or your FEP, free erythrocyte protoporphyrin. So remember that protoporphyrin is the last stage in the heme synthesis or the, yeah, in the, Heme synthesis, whereby the protoporphyrin re, the protoporphyrin nine is actually will be um, will be um, combined with your ferrous iron to produce your heme. So, uh, sir, ano mangyayari kapag walang iron? What will happen kapag my deficiency sa iron brought about and and causing iron deficiency anemia? Na iisip nyo ba kung anong pwedeng mangyare? Na iisip nyo ba na Ka, paano kapag walang ano? Paano kapag walang walang iron? Sabihin na natin, paano pag walang lalaki? Paano pag walang lalaki? Puro girls. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, may ipon yung marami, yung mga girls na single. Okay? May ipon yung mga girls na single kasi wala nang enough na male or lalaki for them to be wedded with. So, parang ganun din pagdating sa proto Porphyrin. Let's assume that your protoporphyrin, your erythrocyte protoporphyrin, are the bride. Pero wala ng groom. Wala ng iron. Okay? Iron as the groom. So because of that, okay? Because of that, the free erythrocyte protoporphyrin will increase during iron deficiency anemia. Why is it? So, protoporphyrin without iron is not incorporated to hemoglobin. So what will happen therefore is erythrocytes normally produce a slight excess of protoporphyrin over what is needed for heme synthesis. But when iron is deficient, protoporphyrin increases. Okay? So dahil nga wala po tayong enough na iron, maiiwan, must stock dun sa stage na yon lahat ng protoporphyrin na pinoproduce ng katawan mo. Sir, bakit po ba siya nagpoproduce? Of course, this is the normal um, cycle of your body, the normal cycle of your mito your RBC and the, your mitochondria within your RBC which is to produce, okay, which is to produce protoporphyrin for heme synthesis and eventually incorporation to become hemoglobin. So, anong nangyari? Okay, so, Anong nangyari sa protoporphyrin? Na-stuck sila. Dumami sila dahil nga wala ng iron for them to be combined with. And did you know, okay? Did you know that the free erythrocyte protoporphyrin or FEP is actually a measurement of F, uh, the measurement of FEP provides a very sensitive, okay? It provides a sensitive and early indicator of iron deficiency okay it um, it provides an early indicator for that is for for iron deficiency so um your free erythrocyte protoporphyrin can also be increased in L, um, in conditions such as iron deficiency anemia chronic disease states and lead poisoning for the lead poisoning, I will elaborate the correlation of lead poisoning and free erythrocyte protoporphyrin when we discuss your porphyria. And I want you to be excited to that, okay? So that will be soon. So aside from that, aside from TIBC, ayan, aside from free erythrocyte protoporphyrin, what other laboratory tests for iron can we use? We can make use of serum ferritin. So again, what is ferritin? This is the soluble storage of iron. So iron storage status, so it is measured using radio immunoassay. So as you can see, um, the reserve or the serum ferritin is higher in men compared to women. Again, um, one factor to consider here is the monthly menstruation, menstruation of your female. In addition to that, we also have here your iron, total iron binding capacity. So again, it is an indirect measurement of your transferins, okay? It is the indirect um it is the indirect measure of your transferrin. So this is the ability of your um transferrin to bind with your iron. Okay? Next is your serum iron. Your serum iron is the measure of the amount of iron bound to transferrin, okay? So you are now measuring the um not the storage but actually the iron being carried by your transferrin. So 
when doing um, serum iron measurement, it's very important to have a 12-hour fasting. Okay, a 12-hour fasting. And also, the urinal variation should be remembered. Be, uh, should be remembered, ergo, your sample should be collected or obtained in the morning. And then in addition to that, um, laboratory tests for the um, for iron deficiency anemia can also be free erythrocyte protoporphyrin. So an increased FEP, an increased uh, free erythrocyte protoporphyrin signifies that there is a decrease or deficient amount of iron inside your body. So when we are talking about um, iron deficiency anemia, there is such stage, there are different stages in the development of iron deficiency anemia. So as you can see here, we have the normal iron status, um, the stage one, stage two, and the stage three. So as you can see, during the um, normal um, iron normal iron status, all parameters that such as hemoglobin, your serum, your TIBC, and your ferritin are all normal. Okay, these are all normal. And as you can see in stage one, the um, iron storage compartment starts to be depleted. But, ito yung gusto kong makita ninyo. But, during the stage one, it would actually appear normal. The storage is already being depleted, but the TIBC, the serum iron, and even hemoglobin is still normal. This is why um, iron deficiency anemia is actually a chronic disease. Hindi mo minsan namamalayan na meron ka ng anemia. Probably the, at, the, at this very moment, while we are talking, some of you could actually be potentially um, having your iron deficiency anemia. And this is due to, um, this is due to the very slow um, development of iron deficiency anemia. Not until mag stage 2, okay, in stage 2. That um, this time transport iron depletion already. So meaning to say, your uh, serum iron decreases already. The serum iron meaning to say the iron being carried by your transferrin also de already decreases. Same thing with your storage, and now your TIBC starts to increase. Again, bakit magi increase si TIBC? Dahil nag increase si transferrin. Again, go back to that part of the video why transferrin is increased during iron deficiency anemia. So in this case, kung makikita ninyo, um, I want you guys to take a look at hemoglobin. Most of the time, most of you knew that for us to be able to diagnose anemia or for us to have a, um, a, ref a, a screening for anemia, you would go for hemoglobin and hematocrit. But that is not true. Okay, that is not true because your hemoglobin can appear normal. Okay, your hemoglobin can appear normal until the stage 2 of iron deficiency anemia. So in this case, normal pa rin yung hemoglobin mo, pero meron ka na palang iron deficiency anemia. Not until, okay, not until you reach the stage 3 where the functional iron depletion, this is now the last stage of iron deficiency anemia where all okay even the even the functional iron compartment are already depleted okay are already depleted as you can see your serum iron and your ferritin starts to decrease your TIBC is now increased and of course now you can say ito um kapag napansin na mababa na yung iron ay mababa na yung hemoglobin rather, it's already kind of um, an advanced or a progressed form of iron deficiency anemia already kasi sobrang bumaba na yung hemoglobin sa katawan. So, as you can see, the, the first laboratory test to decrease in iron deficiency anemia is what? Your ferritin. And I want you to take note of this. The first laboratory test, the first, the first, the first laboratory test, the first laboratory test to decrease, to decrease in iron deficiency anemia is your serum ferritin. Serum ferritin, serum ferritin. Okay? So, um, other laboratory diagnosis, ayan, so we can have your screening, CBC, although sabi ko nga, not until stage 3 yan, it will not be reflecting on your, um, on your, um, CBC, in your hemoglobin hematocrit. Diagnostic, okay, when we say diagnostic, we can actually perform serum ferritin, which is very good. Your TIBC, your serum iron, and percent saturation for your um, transferrin, okay? And in addition to that, we can also do specialized 
testing or diagnostic tests like your free erythrocyte protoporphyrin, bone marrow assessment, specifically iron stain, to check if there are um, enough um, storage of iron in the body. Okay? enough iron in the body. So again, specimen for iron study should be fasting and with diurnal variation, hence to be collected in the morning. So what is now the laboratory finding? So now that we knew, knew the test, we knew the manifestation or the signs and symptoms for iron, uh, the manifestation of um, anemia when it comes to laboratory tests, what is now most, what are now the most prominent um laboratory findings. So firstly, we have the microcytic hypochromic anemia. So iron deficiency anemia, IDA, is actually a form of microcytic hypochromic anemia. So low serum iron, um, ferritin, hemoglobin and hematocrit, low RBC indices, and low reticul reticulocyte count. Okay, Low reticulocyte count are all associated with iron deficiency anemia. But there is one thing that's high, and that is your TIBC. And dagdag na natin dito sa tabi, your TIBC and hence your transferrin. Why? Because your TIBC is directly proportional to your, um, uh, is directly proportional to your transferrin. Okay, directly proportional to your transferrin. In addition to that, when you are looking at the smear, your smear may show ovalocytes or pencil forms of your red blood cells. What are the clinical symptoms on the other hand? Such uh, clinical symptoms on the other hand. Well, you all know that um, one of the most common, okay, one of the most common na, na manifestation of anemia is actually fatigue, okay? Fatigue and dizziness. So fatigue and dizziness is one, is the two um, first in the list. We also have pika. What is pika? Pika on the other pika is yung pa, yung pag pagkikrave ng isang tao sa mga sa non edible na mga bagay so yung mga uh, like yung mga weird na cravings like you crave for you you crave for ice you crave for alam yung mga minamunch pero hindi naman siya edible so that's a sign okay pika you also have stomatitis or crack in the corners of the mouth okay we also have stomatitis. We also have glossitis. Glossitis is the sore mouth. So later on, I'll be showing you a, a picture. And we also have your koilonychia. Okay? We also have your koilonychia. Your koilonychia is the spooning of your nails. So kung kitignan mo yung nails mo ngayon, di ba? Para yang um, may ano siya. Kung baga, hindi siya flat. Okay? Pero anong mangyayari kapag may koilonychia? This is how it looks like. Kung makikita ninyo yung nails para siyang flat, spoon shape na yung kanyang nails. Okay, yung koilonychia again, spoon shape na spoon shape na na spoon shape na po yung ating mga nails. This is glossitis. So kung makikita mo, this is atrophic glossitis. So inflammation of your tongue. And at the same time, we can also have here stomatitis or your angular chelitis whereby the both um, ends ng mouth natin are also um, are also affected. Okay? Are also affected. So these are the usual physical examination findings with patients with iron deficiency anemia. So moving forward now, so that is for your iron deficiency anemia. Hopefully, um, you understood what iron deficiency anemia is all about. Let's move on now to your anemia of chronic disease. Okay? Anemia of chronic disease is because of the inability to use available iron for hemoglobin production. Okay? So yung katawan mo was unable now, okay? Your body now is unable to what? Your body is unable to utilize the iron in your body for hemoglobin production. The impaired release of iron stor uh, storage iron is associated with increased hepcidin levels. Okay? Increased hepcidin levels. Andito na naman po si hepcidin. Ano bang ginagawa ni hepcidin? Okay? Ano bang ginagawa ni hepcidin? So please remember that um, hepcidin is actually a liver hormone and it is increased during a uh, and it is a positive acute phase reactant. Sir, paki-explain, ano po bang ibig sabihin ng 
acute phase reactant. Acute phase reactants are proteins, okay? Proteins that um that are affected during inflammation. So they are there are proteins that may increase and decrease because of inflammation. Pag sinabi nating positive acute phase reactants, these are hormones or these are proteins that increases during inflammation increases during inflammation that is for positive acute phase reactant what about okay what about your what about on the other hand your negative acute phase reactant obviously kapag negative acute phase reactant they decreases during inflammation again they decreases during okay they decreases during um they decreases during um infla so, what is the function of your hepcidin ba all, all along? So, the function of your hepcidin is for iron regulation. How does it regulate your iron? It influences intestinal absorption. Okay? Intestinal absorption. And it also um, influences the release of storage iron from macrophages. So, what, what do you mean by macrophag sa macrophages? The macrophages are the nandoon yung ating mga okay nandoon sa macrophages and hepatocytes natin yung ating mga iron okay yung ating mga iron so what happen okay what happens when heps what happen during inflammation eto ang kwento sabi sa aming barangay okay kidding aside um kidding aside okay what happens during inflammation and why does chronic disease and inflammation can cause anemia. Ito yung kwento. During inflammation, okay, I want you to follow along. During inflammation, there is an in, um there will be acute phase reactants that will increase and decrease. One of those positive acute phase reactants that is um increase in the body is your hepcidin, okay? Is your hepcidin dahil may inflammation sa katawan may tataas yung mga acute phase reactants and one of those are your hepcidin and because there is increased hepcidin inside your body increase then yung mga inhibition na nangyayari because of hepcidin and what are those inhibition the intestinal absorption of iron meaning to say because there is inflammation there is increased hepcidin there is low iron absorption but more so okay more so is that because there is inflammation hepcidin is increased therefore the release of iron storage from macrophages will also be inhibited okay again will also be inhibited so hepcidin production by hepa um hepcidin production okay hepcidin um increases enterocyte um export okay um less iron okay of less iron into the blood and macrophages and hepatocytes therefore retain the iron. So hindi yung hepcidin it blocks the transport of iron out from the hepatocytes and the macrophages. Nandun lang sila. So para itong IATF, okay? Ang hepcidin mo IATF. Ayaw pa labasin yung mga tao dahil may pandemic. So parang ganun din yung ginagawa <clears throat> ng hepcidin sa ating katawan. Okay? Sa ating katawan. Secondly, Okay, let's move forward. Um, in addition to that, okay, in addition to that, um, what are the laboratory, uh, what are the laboratory diagnosis for um, anemia of chronic disease? So laboratory um, manifestation niya, these are normocytic, normochromic anemia. Kung mapapansin ninyo, um, normocytic siya, normochromic anemia. Although, there can also be a slight microcytic hypochromic anemia especially if the iron is already really been um the iron transport has been inhibited so in addition to that you can also see increase esr or increase erythrocyte sedimentation rate sir bakit po increase dahil increase si esr during inflammation ergo esr is also increased during acute chronic um anemia of chronic disease Normal to normal to elevated ferritin levels. So meaning to say normal or elevated kasi nga, hindi na you use up yung ating iron reserves. And here, low serum iron and TIBC. Again, in acute 
and and rather in anemia of chronic disease, serum iron and TIBC are both decreased. Okay? Parehas na mababa. Okay? Parehas na mababa. So they are associated also with persistent infections. So dahil paulit-ulit yung infection mo, paulit-ulit na tataas si hepsidin mo, paulit-ulit niya i-inhibit yung transport ng iron mo. Chronic inflammatory disorder such as uh, systemic lupus erythematosus um, and your rheumatoid arthritis and also your cancer. Okay? Also your cancer. And that is all about your acute, rather, ayan, acute ako ng acute. And that is all about your um. That is all about your anemia of chronic inflammation or chronic disease. So it, I can say it um, through chronic disease or chronic inflammation, okay? Chronic inflammation. So um, in addition to that, siguro I just want to add up na lang din, okay? Um, during inflammation, okay, during inflammation, erythropoiesis can also be diminished, okay? Erythropoiesis can also be diminished because during inflammation, there are some cytokines that will be produced due to immune response and those cytokines will inhibit erith erythropoiesis, okay? Those, um, those, uh, what do you call this? Those um, cytokines inhibit um, inhibit erythropoiesis or RBC production. And last but definitely not the least, at the same time, those cytokines, okay, those cytokines can also shorten your RBC lifespan, okay? Anemia of chronic inflammation has a shortened RBC lifespan, further um, exaggerating or aggravating the anemia in your patient, okay? Aggravating your, your anemia in your patient. So again, um, those things are found on chapter 17 of your RODA. So to finish up, okay, to finish up this time, okay, to finish up this time, um, I'll be ending this part one of our our discussion. Please do um, take a quick, quick break, a five-minute break before you proceed to the next video that I will be uploading. So thank you so much and I'll see you guys in a short while.